Good afternoon. It's good to be in the house of the Lord, and it's a especially great privilege for us. We've been sick for almost a year, not able to preach much. Just we preached just two or three times in the last year, and it seems like the Lord again has brought us through. There has been different times in my life that. I would come to a place that I'd feel like this is it. Be sick and maybe in the hospital and health problems and come to the realization that I felt like that my time had just about got there. And the Lord would come up on the scene and bring me out of it. Seemed like just about every time the doctors really <clears throat> couldn't figure out exactly what was going on. But the Lord would work, and the Lord can surely work, and the Lord will bring us through. Amen. And so we're rejoicing today that once again, that we've got enough strength that we might be able to stand and do that which God would have us to do. And so I'm thankful today for this, another great privilege of being in the house of God. And I want to say this, that I've been on the way for <clears throat> about 40 years. And all of this time been preaching for about 40 years. And all the time that we've walked before the Lord, I can honestly say that I don't feel like that I've seen a day like the day in which we live now. When sin was just so wide open and rampant in our land, but in all of this, I rejoice in the presence of God. Amen. For with all of the <coughs> wickedness and the things around us, it makes a greater contrast with the goodness of God that is still a blessing in our lives. Amen. So we need to look unto the Lord. If you got your Bibles, we want you to turn to the book of 2 Chronicles. Chapter number 7. Many of you that are Bible read today will know where, what we're going to <coughs> take our text from. Very familiar scripture. But I probably won't go maybe in the way <coughs> that you might expect. The, second, the book of 2 Chronicles chapter number 7. We're going to start the reading with the 10th verse. <coughs> and on the 3 and 20th day of the 7th month, He sent the people away into their tents, glad and merry, in their heart for the goodness that the Lord had shewed unto David and to Solomon, <coughs> and to Israel his people. Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord out of the king's house. And all that came into Solomon's heart to make in the house of the Lord. And in his own house he prosperously effected. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven, let there be no rain. If I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, Seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven, will forget their sin, will heal their land. Now mine eyes shall be open, and mine ears attend <coughs> unto the prayer that is made in this place. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house that my main name may be there forever. And mine eyes and my heart 
shall be there perpetually. And as for thee, if thou walk before me, as David thy father walked, and do according to all that I have commanded thee, and shall observe my statutes, my judgments, then will I establish the throne of thy kingdom, according as I have co covenanted with David thy father, saying, There shall not fail a man to be ruler in Israel. But if you turn away, forsake my statutes and my commandments, which I have set before you, and you shall go serve other gods, worship them, then will I put them up by the roots out of the, my land, which I have given them. <clears throat> and this house, which I have sanctified for my name, will I cast out of my sight, and make it to be a proverb, and a byword among all nations. And this house which is high shall be an astonishment to everyone that passeth by it, so that he shall say, Why hath the Lord done this unto this land and unto this house? And it shall be answered, because they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, laid hold on other gods, worshipped them, and served them. Therefore hath he brought all this evil upon them. Correctly read, read the remainder of the chapter. I want to take you for a journey. Often say that. But I believe we're living in a time when someone needs to take us for a journey down through the Word of God, bringing forth the precious book of life. We can see that work, how we have been in time past. We can lay hold of the promises that God hath made unto us. And I want to take you back under the time of a man that was testified of God that he was a man after God's own heart. A man that was called David, a goodly man, but a man that even in the will of God was a man of war from his youth up. A man that all of his life had spent in fighting battles in the name of his God. There come a time when David I began to look around and he saw that the people was living in good places and the house of the Lord was not yet built. The Lord had dwelt in the journey in the wilderness there. He had dwelled in a tabernacle, a tent if you'll have it, in the wilderness. And that carried forth that tent. But it came forth in the heart of David that he would build a house unto God. Listen to that children. And when he began to mention it, unto the man of God, the man didn't take time, I guess, to see if it was a good thing. It seemed good. And it sounded good. And he said, David, go and do according to all that is in thy heart. And the Lord shall bless thee. But he didn't get very far until the Lord sent him back and said, you go and tell David, you will not build me a house. <laughs> build a house for God. Brother Ford would be a great thing, wouldn't it? But it wasn't in the will of God. And it wasn't because of that David had sinned. Listen, even though that he had in his lifetime, but it was because that David had shed much blood. He just simply wasn't qualified to build a house for God. God had forgiven him of his sins there, of the life that he had led, of shedding blood was not the life uh, that God had in mind uh, to build a house of peace, uh, a house that all nations uh, uh, could come unto God uh, and the man of God uh, and to go back and say, David, uh, you'll not build me a house. Uh, you've been a man of war. Uh, you have shed much blood. Uh, but he said, I'll give you peace. Uh, well, praise God, uh, in the days of thy son, uh, and he shall be raised up uh, and he'll build a house for me. Uh, and I'll cause there uh, to be 
made peace in all the land in the days of thy son. And Solomon was born. Listen to thy children. I guess I think about it. He come forth. And there come a time that Solomon was great in the eyes of God. Listen to me. And God began to say unto Solomon. He said, ask me anything that you want. If I remember right. Ask him maybe if the heavens above or the earth believe. But I don't think that was in there. But I mean, he said, you ask it. And Solomon, he thought about it, I guess. And when he asked the Lord, he could have asked for riches. But he didn't. He could have asked for glory. But he didn't. He asked for wisdom in the Word of God. Most preachers miss that, don't they? But listen, he asked for wisdom in the Word of God that he might rule his people. And God said, you could have asked for riches and I would have given them to you. You could have asked for glory and honor and I would have given it to you. But you asked for wisdom that you might rule my people. He said, therefore, I'll give you the riches. I'll give you the glory. But he said, I'll give you wisdom such as no man has ever had from the beginning of time and neither indeed shall be. And Solomon, oh God, began to deal with him to build a house for the Lord. <laughs> the Lord dealt with me many years ago when I was yet lost. Again, the place upon my heart I need to build a house for the Lord. Listen today, children. And I'm persuaded He did you too. If you're standing sitting here this evening and are a child of God, listen today, children. God does not dwell in a building made with hands. And neither does He build a dwell today in a building made of brick or stone. But God lives within each one of us. And Paul said in one place, he said, He uh, that builded all things uh, is God. Uh, and he said, Whose house are we uh, if we hold fast uh, uh, the beginning of our confidence uh, and the rejoicing of our hope? Uh, uh, firm unto the end, uh, we are the house of God. Uh, and God will really live uh, uh, within our hearts. Uh, and they used to sing the song uh, uh, about a cabin uh, in the corner of Glory Land. Uh, and someone said, uh, I'll be content. Uh, I'll live in a shack as long as I make it to the other side. I'm not worrying about a building a dwell in on that side. But I'll tell you today, children, we are the building of God. And if God would live in this house, it cannot be a ramshackle shack by the side of the road. But we need to build up a house, a fit for the King of all glory. But a dwell in today. We need a house and that's founded upon the word of God and that's raised up in righteousness today. <laughs> David began when the Lord told him, You'll not build me a house. David began to lay up in store other for the house that his son would come along and would build. They didn't begin to lay up on the gold and the silver and the cedars of Lebanon and all of these things. For he knew that the word of God would stand sure and that Solomon would come and build a house for God. And so it came. And Solomon had a desire to build a house for God. And he built all of these things. I believe even as Moses did in the wilderness, God said unto Moses, See that you build the tabernacle according to the pattern shown to thee in the mount. It was a shadow of things in glory. It was a shadow of spiritual things. Listen to the children that would come to pass. And I believe that Solomon, when he built the house of God, the Bible said that he built it according to all that came into his heart. And when he had built it, God's house, and it was great, and it was fine. He held it 
unless in a dedication unto the Lord and he began to pray unto the Lord of glory and to make sacrifice and he began to beseech of the name of God that God would be in this place today. <laughs> Solomon began to pray. I want to take you over a few things. Solomon began to pray when he had built the house of the Lord. He said, Hearken therefore unto the supplications of thy servant and of thy people Israel, which they shall make toward this place. Hear thou from thy dwelling place, even from heaven. And when thou hearest forgive, if a man sin against his neighbor, listen to thy children, and an oath be laid upon him, but to make him swear, and the oath come before thine altar in this house, then hear thou from heaven and do, and judge thy servant by requiting the wicked, by recompensing his way upon his own head. And by justifying the righteous, by giving him according to his righteousness. Listen to children, I believe that that is what Solomon prayed for. And I'm persuaded today that that's what Solomon would do. Or that what God would do. That his ear would be intent as he swore unto Solomon there under the prayer that was prayed in that place. And if you'll notice what God said, listen to their children. He didn't talk about the people out on the hillsides that were lost in unbelief. He didn't talk about the heathen that lived around about them in all of the ways. But God began to say unto Solomon, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. I don't think God's overly concerned, Brother Denny. Though the fact that lost people are living like lost people. That's all they know how. Listen to their children. But when people in the church begin to live like lost people, then something's coming off. And God said it, my people, which are called by my name, of them that call themselves by the name of God. I don't know about you, but in Revelation, it speaks about a new name being given unto those. I've always kind of felt like that that new name was the name of a Christian. It's something we had never had before. We become part of the church and the power of God. And Solomon said, if any of thy people shall do wickedly, listen to their children, and shall sin against his neighbor. I tell you today, we're always preaching about sinning against God. But we can also sin against our neighbor. I know the scriptures where it talks of a man sinning against his own body in fornication today. We're living in a time when sin is rampant in the land. But Solomon prayed if a man he sins against his neighbor and an oath be laid upon him and it come before him this altar. He said, Oh Lord, he said, Require of the wickedness against the guilty. And he said, Listen, bless the righteousness of the righteous today. <laughs> it's a sad thing, but the wickedness of the wicked will shine forth a whole lot more than the righteousness of a good man. It'll stand out. And the world will see it. And Jesus said, Let thy light so shine before me that they might see thy good works, that they be of God and glorify God, which is in heaven. We've got a light, and that light comes from the Word of God, and that light will shine forth. But it seems like in this day and time that an evil deed will travel from coast to coast, yea, all around the world. But if someone does something good, you won't hear much said about it today. <laughs> One man turning. 
away from the commandments of God can do more damage than ten good men can in a lifetime trying to build up the kingdom of God. Listen today. Solomon went on and began to pray. He said, Lord, and if thy people Israel be put to the worse, I want you to think about that. But speaking of coming up in a battle, I read of a time in the Word of God, different times when battles would come and the children of Israel, though they were God's children, though they had been led through a sea, even as the Bible said, baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and they had seen the pillar of the cloud and the pillar of fire by night, the Spirit of Almighty God. I read of a time when sin began to come into the camp, and they would go forth to battle, expecting the victory, and there was no victory there, but the enemy overcome them. I read of a time, in the time of Eli, when Eli's sons were beasts, and they committed all these abominable acts, and they were in the priesthood, and Eli wouldn't set them down, and they had the Ark of the Covenant. Listen today, children, this time had come forth, even before David heard Solomon built the house of God, but they had destroyed the house of God by their wickedness today, and the Philistines came forth, and they brought forth the Ark of the Covenant, like they had always done, when the Ark went through, and the victory belonged to God's people. When the Philistines seen the ark, they were scared to death. And they said, we're going to die. They had brought that ark, bring destruction. Nevertheless, we're going to quit ourselves like men. We're going to die fighting. But they didn't lose the battle because there was sin in Israel. Listen, they children. And the Philistines won the battle. And the children of Eli were killed in the battle. Eli, a little later, fell over and broke his neck and died. And the ark was taken captive into the temple of the heathen God. Listen to those children. When there's sin in the land, as with the silver wedge and the Babylonian garments. Even good people were lost in the battle. Listen today, children, there was sin in the camp. I'll tell you today, Solomon prayed if Israel will be put to the worst before the enemy because they have sinned against God. <laughs> you know, we're living in a time when. <laughs> There's war on every hand, ain't there? It seems like that maybe war will just have to come even to, for even the whole soul. There's not a man alive that has been alive for a long time and that has ever seen war on American soil. It's been that long ago, something like 150 years ago or so, when the Civil War. But I'll tell you today, children, Paul said that there, or the Bible said there'd be wars and rumors of wars. But he said, be not afraid. The end is not yet. There have always been war. But listen today, children, we build up our confidence and the knowledge of our science Scientist, and we build up our trust in the power of our armies and all of these things and the technological weapons that we have got. But I'll tell you today, children, the Bible said except God keep the city of the watchman waking but in vain. Except God build the city of they neighbor in vain that would build it today if we turn our backs upon God and surely we have in the whole world today and then God will deliver us up and all of our technologies will not save us as Solomon said if the people of Israel be put to worse in a battle because they have sinned against thee and shall return Confess thy name and pray and make supplication for thee in this 
trespass. Dead here in hell from the heavens. Forgive the sins of thy people Israel. Bring them again into the land which thou gavest to them and to their fathers. Listen to their children. When they have sinned against God and the battle begins to go the other way, if they will return unto the Lord, I'll tell you today, children, if there was ever a time that we needed to return unto God, it's the time in which we live. We've educated God right out of the hearts of our children. We've outlawed Him on the streets and in the public places. But there's no wonder we outlawed Him in our homes long before they outlawed Him in the courthouses. Listen to the children. If we be put to worse, there's only one thing and that's return to God with prayer and with supplication. Confess our sins. And Solomon said, Lord, then will you hear from heaven and return them under their own land today. <laughs> the enemy is upon us. <laughs> He's all around. I've never seen a time like today. I've never seen such wickedness. And our children will be destroyed in iniquity and sin. There's only one answer, and that's return unto God. Now, I remember a time. And we've had good services here in this camp meeting. We felt the Spirit and the power of God. But I remember a time when it wasn't hard. Go out and find a good service. And the Word was preached. And people would rejoice. And there would be shouting. Sister Ruthie in the house of God. Preachers would walk the benches. I'm not really too sure about all of that. But listen to their children. They'd walk the benches. And they'd shout the praises of God. And God would come down in a mighty way. I'll tell you today, children. We need to return unto the Lord our God. We've been carried into a strange land. We've been brought into discouragement and despair. And it seems like that our religious freedoms are to be taken away. And God had swore that I'm getting wore out. I'm going to shorten this thing. But I'll tell you today, children, God swore unto Solomon there. He said, I'll make from this house a house that I have chosen to dwell in forever. When God built the temple there, now the hands of Solomon, it was intended to last forever. And if you look up forever in the dictionary, it'll be defined as until the end of time. God had intended. He said, if you will keep my commandments, we preach and teach that we don't have to keep them anymore. <laughs> we don't even believe in about one or two of them. <laughs> thou shalt not kill and thou shalt not steal. <laughs> That's about all that matters anymore. <laughs> Ain't a sin to covet. <laughs> Fornication's not a sin. <laughs> Adultery's not a sin. <laughs> listen to children. It don't seem to be a sin to uh, listen for people to despise their parents. Uh, they don't honor their parents. Uh, they don't put God first uh, in their lives. Uh, even heard a few people come out and say, uh, my family is first in my life. Uh, and after them, God. Uh, God will not take second place uh, in your life. Uh, but listen to their children. Uh, we've had this and all uh, of the commandments of God. Preachers will say they don't matter anymore. But John said, listen to children. He said, if you don't keep my commandments, he said, you don't love me today. He that keepeth his commandments, he it is that loveth me. And I'll love him today. We need the commandments of God. And God said, if ye will do my statutes and will keep my commandments, then will I establish this house forever today. Can you remember just a year or two back, a few years back, people were scared to death. Every time you went out, 
He was talking about how that government was going to shut the doors of our churches. They were going to lock the doors of our churches and we wouldn't be able to come to church anymore. I preached at Baker's Ridge different times. I never was worried about the government taking our churches. We'll lock them ourselves. We'll lock them ourselves. Because we have not kept the commandments of God. Solomon made all of these supplications. On to God, just go on down. In this sixth chapter of the book of Second Chronicles, I'm not going to try to read any more of them. And you go on down of how that by sin, the pestilence and the caterpillar and the canker worm and all of these things, the blasting and the mildew. And Solomon would say when they come, if the people repent and come back, then hear from heaven and restore the land and come on down. And Solomon made a declaration there, a supplication if you'll have it unto God that his sons would be priests, would be clothed in righteousness today. <laughs> Ain't too much righteousness in the world anymore. People will lie, they'll cheat, they'll steal, and preachers is just as bad as anyone else. There's a whole lot of lying going on behind the sacred desk. <laughs> we need the Word of God. <laughs> the Bible talks of a time when <laughs> men's hearts will be turned from <laughs> the truth <laughs> and will be turned unto fables. <laughs> if you look up a fable in the dictionary, <laughs> A fable is defined as a, a short story that has a, a moral message to it. Listen to children, Aesop's fables involved rabbits and turtles and all of these things, but they always had a good moral value to it. But they were just a story. They were not the truth today. Listen, what the writer said, when it was full, the time would come turn their ears away from the truth and be turned into fables. A pilot asked Jesus the question, what is truth? Jesus, the Bible had already said, Jesus had prayed and said, sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is truth today. We are begotten by the word of God. It's the only thing that will get the job done today. But there's more pretty stories with moral values being preached in the pulpits than the Word of God. Because he says in, it said in one place, my people love to have it so. The priest prophesies falsely. And the prophet. And he said, my people love to have it so. They want a pretty story. They want something that's practiced and rehearsed. That's something that will make you feel good. Listen to their children. But we need the Word of God. Listen to their children. In Josiah's day, the house of God had fallen into ruin. And the Word of God had been lost for generations. They didn't even know where it was at. I'm going to tell you today, just about every home has a Bible, but there's very few that ever hears or preaches of the Word of God. If my people, which are called by my name, that's the church today, will humble themselves. We're an arrogant people. Religious people. We're an arrogant people. Every group has their own doctrine. And every one of us is convinced that ours comes straight from the mind of God. Ain't we? Look around. Go, I preached in all sorts of denominations. Every one of us is convinced that our beliefs come straight from God. We couldn't possibly be wrong. Because we got God with us. Now anybody knows that everybody can't be right when everybody's got a different doctrine. 
Everybody's got a different doctrine. But everybody knows that they can't all be right. But we're proud and we're arrogant. It's always the other person that's wrong. And we don't even examine our own selves. I tell you today, children, we need to preach the Word. Be instant, in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. And the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts, heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, will turn their ears away from the truth of the Word of God and be turned unto fables today. Listen today, children. We all need to come to the place that we lay to the side everything that we think we believe. Now that ain't going to be popular. <laughs> whether it be right, or whether it be wrong, Brother Ford, we need to lay it to the side. Get into the Word of God and see whether it's right or wrong. If it's not taught in God's Word, it's not right. You can't depend on it. If it is taught in God's Word, then it's the truth whether we've accepted it or not. But if you're so, if we're so certain of our own infallibility, we'll never examine it. We'll never lay it beside the Word of God. And even if someone shows us, reads it to us right out of the Word of God, we won't accept it today. Because it's not our belief. That's just not the way we believe it. Listen to children. We need to lay aside all of these things and get back to the Word of God. The Word will tell us the truth, but people don't want the truth. People don't want the truth. They'd rather have a pretty story. They'd rather have church doctrine than to have the Word of God. Listen today, children. Church doctrine can be a lie if it's not of God. I'm going to give you two or three examples. I'm going to get down out of the way. How many times have you ever heard when Jesus told the little story about the woman taken in adultery in the very act? And they said, Lord, what should we do with her? She was taken in the act of adultery in the very act. Now Moses said that we should stone her to death. What do you say? Listen, they children. Jesus just let them talk. And he bowed down. And he began to write in the sand. Listen, they children. And when they pressed him again, he said, all that is without sin, let him cast a first stone. And he began to write in the sand again. And listen, and they being convicted in their own conscience, and they turned and began to walk away. And Jesus looked up. There was no one left. And he said, Woman, where are thou accusers? Doth none condemn thee? And she said, None, Lord. Amen. He said, Neither do I condemn thee. Go. Amen. And sin no more. And how many times have you heard preachers preach what Jesus wrote in the sand? And they were sure. They were honest. They were dead certain. But everyone was different. One preacher, many preachers, Richie wrote the sins of the people in the sand. And that's the reason they were condemned and they walked away. Could have been. Others said he wrote her pardon in the sand. Could have been. But it ain't the Word of God because it ain't in there. It ain't in there. And not too many people's worried about being called a liar when they stand before God. And they've preached a lifetime on that. God revealed this and God wrote their sins in the sand. Why when we stand before God and God says, I didn't do no such thing. <laughs> and He calls us a liar. <laughs> We're not scared of it. <laughs> We're not afraid of it. <laughs> I've been preached it many times. <laughs> and in 40 years, I've never seen one person change. <laughs> I have never seen in 40 years of preaching <laughs> one person change. 
their mind on it. <laughs> if they believe He wrote the sins of the people, they're still preaching it. <laughs> and I warned them, <laughs> what if you're wrong? <laughs> they weren't about being wrong <laughs> because they've got a special connection with God. <laughs> when David went forth to fight Goliath, <laughs> he picked five smooth stones out of the brook. <laughs> And the question has been asked for years, why did he get five? Well, the most popular belief is that he was going to clean house because Goliath was one of five giants. Now that's true, the numbers come out. And that's the reason they believe it. And you may believe it, and I'm not going to fall out with you if you do. He was one of five in the family. And David was going to go and get every one of them. <laughs> well, that sounds good, don't it? <laughs> but David was just a little boy from another country. <laughs> he didn't know they was in battle when he come down there. How would David have known Goliath? He didn't know who Goliath was when he walked out on that hillside and challenged the armies of God. Someone had to tell him what was going on. Listen to their children. And I've said that. And they have said, well, God showed it to him. Listen to children. That he'd be prepared. Well, if God knew that David needed to be prepared, why didn't David kill them all? He didn't kill one of them but Goliath. <laughs> Why would God warn him of something that didn't happen? <laughs> David killed Goliath. <laughs> His mighty men of <laughs> war <laughs> accounting for the rest of them in the years to come. <laughs> Listen, it just don't make sense. <laughs> but preachers will preach it <laughs> as just luck. It was the very Gospel what if we stand before God and God calls us a liar? And we say, God showed us this. And Sister Ruthie, God says, I didn't show you. <laughs> it ain't the Word. I didn't show it to you. Amen. But people are not afraid of that because they're not afraid of God. We've got Him to be so kind and so gentle and so meek. <laughs> it's just an honest mistake. It's not going to make any difference. He's just going to forgive us and go on. But will He? <laughs> he doesn't change. <laughs> when Corey rose up again, Moses, God opened up the earth and swallowed him. <laughs> when <laughs> David's man, when he was bringing the Ark of the Covenant back, <laughs> He hit a rough place in the road and no man could touch that ark. He just reached out to steady it and God killed him. When the man of God that cried against the altars of Bethel in the days of a listen of Jeroboam, listen when he disobeyed God and he he ate and drank in the land because of the old prophet had lied to him. God sent a line and took his life. When Ananias and Sapphira in the New Testament after the day of Pentecost, when they lied about how much they'd sold their land for, they died there on the spot. Listen to their children. Listen. God is a great God. He's full of mercy. But Paul said, Behold the goodness and the severity of God unto them that fail a severity. But unto thee goodness if thou continue in His goodness. Otherwise thou also shall be cut off today. We don't preach the severity of God because we don't believe in the severity of God. And we feel like though He would send everybody else to hell, that no matter how many times we fail, we're going to be alright. But we're going to have to repent like everybody else if we've got sin in our lives. Solomon said, there's none that sinneth not. We fail from time to time. But there's a remedy. God will give us a chance to repent. Will you repent? Will we get strong? Will our churches be closed? Will we be forced to take people in that are living ungodly lives? It may happen. But I'll promise you this, if it happens, it's because we haven't moved up unto God. God will protect His church Amen. if we will live before God in a way that He will see fit. If we turn our backs on Him, 
He'll turn His backs upon this church. The church that Solomon built. I'm going to call it a church. It was a temple. It had the sacred things in there. The, the veil that no man could go behind but the high priest and him only once a year. The Ark of the Covenant was in there. The cherubims of glory and the manna that they collected in the wilderness. and the, the Moses' tablets of stone and all of these things. They were in there, I guess. But listen today, children. God had sworn that that house should stand forever. But it didn't. In the days of Nebuchadnezzar, they brought it down to the very last stone. Why? Because the people turned their backs on God. Nebuchadnezzar couldn't have touched it unless God had delivered His people up. I'll tell you, Satan can't touch this church. He can't do it except God deliver us up. Will God deliver us up? If we don't... If we don't return unto the Lord with all of our heart, with all of our strength, if His people, God said, if my people... He didn't talk about the people out there on the hillsides that's never known God. But He said, if my people, which are called by my name... Being called a Christian is being called by the name of God, ain't it? That's His name, Christ. God the Son. If my people which are called by my name will humble themselves. You know, there's not too many people that's humble. No. I know people and preachers and I, I'm, I'm, I count them friends. I, I love them, I really do, but they've got problems. You could ask a hundred people and every one of you would say they were arrogant and proud. But I'm sure, myself included, if I was willing to talk about them. But I tell you, if you ask them if they were humble, they'd say, yeah, I'm humble. I'm just as humble as I can be. If they are, it's not showing. And I'm not really sure how much mine shows. Are you really sure how much yours shows? We may not be as humble as we think we are. We may be proud. They may be a touch of arrogance in us. We may think we're something special in the eyes of God above everybody else. God knows my heart. That's what we say. The truth is, He does. <laughs> but He knows your heart too. <laughs> and He knows how easy it is for us to lie to our own selves. <laughs> are we humble? <laughs> he said, if my people, <laughs> which are called by my name, <laughs> would humble themselves, <laughs> we're going to have to bring ourselves down to where we think of ourselves as being just about nothing. <laughs> God is everything. I'm not nothing today. And pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Do we have wicked ways? Israel did. We can see it in our churches today. People's got wicked ways. They lie, they cheat, they steal, they rob from the church treasury. They do they do just about everything. <laughs> Preachers will rob from the congregation. They'll lie to them for a dollar. Is this not wickedness? It's wickedness. But listen, he said, turn from your wicked way. Then will I hear from heaven and I will heal the land. God needs to heal this land. You can't hardly raise anything anymore. It'll, the blasting and the mildew and the caterpillar. I mean, you can't hardly, you can't spray it enough to save it. There was a time when you didn't have to spray anything because God looked after it. We need to repent. We need to come back to God. I've seen the power of God in this church. I guess stronger than any church that I've ever been in in my life. I seen, I can't remember now, but I think it was a two gallon maybe, or a five gallon at the very most container of water in July with over a hundred people. And the service lasted from 6.30 till about two o'clock the next morning. And they was a steady line for hours and hours to that water jug. I wouldn't go. Because I knew that the last, next person that went, it'd be the last drop. And I, I, I just wasn't willing to take the last drop from a thirsty soul. But do you know the deacon poured water out when the service was over? <laughs> Ain't no doubt in my mind is 20 gallons of water drunk at night. 
But it wasn't just a, just a jug about that big around, about that tall. <laughs> Two, three gallon. <laughs> but they poured out water. <laughs> I've seen the power of God. <laughs> I know what He can do. <laughs> I've heard the promises of God. <laughs> and I know what He can do. <laughs> This is God's house just as surely as the temple that Solomon built. The old saints of God dedicated it to the Lord just as surely as Solomon dedicated that temple that he built back there in his day. And God swore that He would take care of us. If preachers preach just every day, there are no ifs in the Bible, but it's in there 1,530 sometimes. Now that's a big mistake, ain't it? If... We'll humble ourselves if we'll keep His commandments, if we'll preach His Word, if we'll study His Word, if we'll lay our beliefs beside the Word of God, if we'll lay our lives beside His Word. Now, that's not a quotation, but I believe it's the truth. If we'll lay our lives beside the Word of God, then God will He'll bless us. And He'll help us to grow. <laughs> there ain't enough devils in hell to take this church away from us <laughs> if we'll keep our hearts and we in the will with God. <laughs> but He said, if you'll, if you'll keep My statutes, <laughs> He said, one will chase ten. <laughs> ten will chase a hundred. <laughs> a hundred will chase a thousand. <laughs> and a thousand will put ten thousand to flight. <laughs> but He said, if you turn your backs on Me, <laughs> He said... <laughs> Ten will flee from one. And I ain't going to go through all that again, but he said they'll flee when no one pursueth you. <laughs> You'll flee when no one pursueth you. We've got to turn our ways back to the Lord. The Bible speaks of going down in all nations. I forget God. We've forgotten God. We've outlawed Him, we've declared Him non existent. We've, we've decided that everything that pertaineth to this book, you hear it just about every day. They'll say they'll get to talking about the character of Jesus. or Was there someone that bore a child and that, that had never been with a man? And they'll say, well, this is an old myth. This is an old myth. It ain't no myth. Mary was not a mythological <coughs> creature, <coughs> and neither was Christ. But that's where we're at today. We consider the Word of God a myth, or it's just a story. It's got good moral values, but it's just a collection of stories. It's the Word of God. It'll see us through. Are you scared to death when you look at the news? When you see everything that's going on? Murders every day. Blasphemy every day. Abomination every day. Drugs, you don't hear as much as you did used to years ago, but do you know it's not because they're not there? They say the cocaine usage in the United States and death by cocaine is higher than it's ever been in history. And you ain't even hearing nothing about it no more. All of these things... Doesn't it just scare you? It scares me. What's the answer? There's only one answer. And that's God. Amen. Come back to the Word. And the Word will set you free. I don't know how long I've been up here. But I've been up here long enough. It's been good to be in the house of the Lord. and I'm thankful for this great privilege of being able to come. I'm thankful for the liberty that we've had here today. Children, let's, let's come back to the Word. We don't need all of these other things. I mean, there's so, so many ideas in the land today and at least 99.9 .9 of them has absolutely no basis in Bible whatsoever. They're just ideas. But listen today, children. God's Word has been, it's been proven. It's stood. It's withstood the fire. It's withstood the flood. It's withstood the den of lions. It's withstood evil kings. It's withstood, withstood evil invaders. It's withstood great armies that's come in to destroy just a handful of people. 
And it'll stand for us if we'll hold on to the Word of God. May God bless you. May God bless you is our prayer today. We want to say this, the altars of God are always open.